Shalom. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Yakal. So today I want to greet you in the name of Abba Nawa Yahweh, Vahashema Mashiach, Kwamalak Yahweh The topic of today is salvation. Are we saved? There's a doctrine that speaks about once saved, always saved. And this is not hearsay. I know churches that actually practice this. So the danger with that is, if I say I'm saved and I go back to my old ways, my thinking would be, there's nothing that will ever happen to me or that will make me miss the kingdom of God. Very dangerous. Other question that I want to ask you, or the question I want to ask you is, are we saved? Is anybody saved? Any one of us that's alive today, are we saved? I don't think so. And I'll prove it with the scriptures today. So get your pen, your notebooks, and let's start. The scripture that most people go to, to say that we are saved today, is Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Yahweh and shall believe in thine heart that the Most High has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So Paul is saying if you believe and confess, you shall be saved. That word shall there meaning will happen. Not that you are saved, but that you will be saved immediately after you believe. You shall be saved. Future tense. Right? So now, it says here, For with the heart men believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Right? So now, we believe unto righteousness, and with the confession we get salvation. So now, remember it says that we need to confess. Let's see if confession is enough. Matthew chapter 15, and I'll start with verse 7. It says, Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah, meaning Isaiah, prophesied of you, hypocrites. It says, This people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me, with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Meaning, we draw near to the Most High with our lips, we say good things, we love Him with no action, we honor Him with our lips, we glorify and praise His name with no action, but our hearts, meaning our minds, is very, very far from Him. Right? So let's go back to the book of Romans, chapter 10 and verse 10. It says, for, the, for with the heart many believe it unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. So we confess, right? So let's see what we confess and if confession is enough. I'm going back to the book of Matthew. This time I'm starting in verse 21, chapter 7, verse 21. And this is Yahweh speaking. It says, not everyone that say it unto me, Lord, Lord. So not everyone that confess shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So if you do the will of the Father, that is your access point into the kingdom. Verse 22. Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name? cast out many devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. So all these things we do in his name, this is judgment day, people, where we try to um, say, you know what, this is my evidence, this is what I've done in your name, right? Verse 23 says, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So on judgment day, Yahweh Shai is going to say, listen man, I don't know you. Who are you? Depart from me. But depart from me, why? It says you that work iniquity. So let me show you the um, a translated version of that same verse. The NLT says, Matthew 7 verse 23, but I will reply, I never knew you. 
get away from me, you that break God's laws. So it's not just a matter of I believe and so now I am making it into the kingdom. Right. So let's go back to the book of Romans and we'll pick it up at verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We've just seen now, Yahweh Shai say it's not those that say Lord, Lord, right? So the understanding, Paul is for giving us a broader understanding. We can't just end at verse 9. Verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Right? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So the preacher is the one that will introduce you to the Most High, to his Son, to his, um, the commandments, to the things that you need to follow. That will come from the preacher. Right. Get yourself a good preacher. Somebody that will teach you not opinion, but scripture. I am putting myself out there. If you need a teacher, contact me. I can teach you. Verse 15 says, And how shall they preach except they be sent? Sent by who? Not by my pastor, but by the Most High. As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. So twice here, we see that Paul is quoting the Old Testament. So while we go to the Old Testament quickly, I want to show you or just remind you that people normally say, leave the Old Testament, it's done away with. Yahweh Shai himself now quoted Isaiah. Paul is quoting Isaiah. These guys were quoting the Old Testament. What right do we have? Not to want to touch the Old Testament. Remember, they were in the New Testament. They were not in the Old Testament. Paul was in the New. Yahweh Jai is in the New. If we say we just want to follow them, but they follow the Old. So we need to follow what they followed. Anyway, Isaiah 52 and verse 7 says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. Paul was quote, quoting this, right? It says also, they publish it peace, that bring it good tidings of good, that publish it salvation, that say it unto Zion, thy God reign. So now, let me just go back to Hebrews chapter 10. And I think it was, I wanted to show you something. So here when it says, for the scripture say it, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Again, Paul is quoting Isaiah. Right, so let's go to Isaiah 28 and it's verse 16. It says here, Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious stone or cornerstone, a sure foundation, and he that believeth shall not make haste right so paul said all you have to do is believe but let us see how we believe john 7 38 says he that believeth on me as the scripture had said out of his belly shall flow rivers of loving water we have to believe in him as the scripture has said and not just believe and think now i'm going to make it in the book of Sirach chapter 32 verse 24 says, He that believeth in Yahweh taketh heed to the commandment, and he that trusted in him shall fare never the worse. That is how we believe, right? So now, let's go to the person that died for us on the cross. Because we might misunderstand what Paul is trying to say, but let us see what the Most High Son, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. Let us see what he says. Who makes it in and when are you saved? 
Matthew chapter 24 verse 13 says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So Yahweh Shai is saying, if you endure unto the end, that is when you are saved, right? So I'm going to the blue letter Bible just to show you different translations on that same word. So Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13, NLT says, But the one who endure to the end will be saved. RSV, but he who endures to the end will be saved. NIV, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Last one, ESV, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Right? So now, Yahweh Shah himself says that you need to endure until the end to be saved. Right? So Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, it says here, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in there. So the bulk of us are going into that broad gate and we're going to miss the kingdom. But he's telling us to go into the narrow gate so that we can go into the or make it into the kingdom of heaven. So what is that narrow gate? Look at this. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 7. And I'll start with verse 3. Remember it was talking about the narrow gate. It says here, and I said, speak on my God. Then said he unto me, The sea is set in a wide place, that it might be deep and great. The wide gate, right? Then it says, But put the case, the entrance were narrow and like a river. The narrow entrance. Who then can go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow how could he come into the broad? So you have to go through the narrow gate to get into the broad city, right? It says here, there is also another thing. A city is builded and is set upon a broad field and is full of good things. So let's imagine that this is the kingdom of heaven. It's set in a broad field, beautiful city, streets of gold, right? Crystal waters then we also have golden buildings we have beautiful gardens and vineyards and plants and trees and fruit and all kinds of animals living in harmony in in the kingdom so it says here and it's full of good things it says here the entrance thereof is narrow so to get into that kingdom go into that straight gate because the entrance it says is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were a fire on the right hand, and on the left a deep water. So what the angel is telling Ezra here is, to get into the kingdom is not an easy thing, right? It says it's dangerous because you are going to be attacked by people. People are going to hate you. It's going to be difficult for you to stand firm unto the end. Right? It says here, verse 8, And one only part between them both. So it says here, even between the fire and the water, very narrow part. You actually need to think, where am I going to put my next step? I need to walk in such a way that I don't fall into the water or fall into the fire. This is the dangerous part. It says here, so shall, so shall that be, so shall that there could be one man go there at once. Meaning, only one person can go into um, this narrow or on this narrow part, the straight part, at once. So it's not for two people to walk side by side. It's so narrow, only one person can go in at a time. It says, verse 9, If this city now were given unto a man, for an inheritance. We all want to inherit the kingdom of God. 
if he never shall pass the danger set before him, if you never go through the trials and tribulations, how shall he receive this inheritance? It's impossible for you or me to receive the inheritance if we don't walk that narrow path. People are scared to be disowned by their families. People are scared to um, um, offend people. And okay, let me just go with the norm. Verse 14 says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and a few there be that find it. We just saw now how narrow that gate is, and the dangers set before us, and the fires, and everything else. So now, Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 1. It says, And he answered me, saying, The Most I had made this world for many, but the world to come for few. Can you see? So only a few will find it. The world, the next world is only made for few. It says here, I will tell thee a similitude, Ezra, as when thou askest the earth. So ask the earth, he says, it shall say unto thee that it given much mold whereof earthen vessels are made. So there's a lot of clay where we make earthen vessels from. It's in abundance. I have a lot of clay I can just do and, you know, go haywire. Then it says, but little dust that gold cometh from. So the gold is the one in minority. The mold is the one in majority. It says here, even so is the cause of this present world. So the Most High is looking for the gold. Right? It says here, verse 3, there be many created, but few shall be saved. The same thing Yahweh Shai is saying. Only a few will find that gate. The Bible also tells us many are called, but few are chosen. Right? So now, look at this. This is the book of Sirach. Right? Chapter 2 and verse 1. Nobody ever tells you this when you come to serve the Most High. It says, My son, if thou come to serve Yahweh, prepare thy soul for temptation. Make ready. Put yourself a manly stomach because what's coming is not going to be easy. You will be tested. You will need to stand. It says, set thy heart aright and constantly endure. There's that word again. He that endures to the end, constantly endure. And make not haste in the time of trouble. Right? It says, cleave unto him. So when the trouble comes, cleave unto the Most High. And depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Again, endure to the end. It says here, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. So normally, when we are down, people kick us even further. They step on you, they tramp on you, because why? They have you in a position where they want you. It says here, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. So when those troubles come, don't say, but God, where are you? Take it cheerfully. And be patient. Don't be in a hurry. Paul also says that we need to run this race with patience. Don't. This is not a 100 meter sprint. This is not a, a relay. Take it cheerfully and with patience right it says here when thou art changed to a low estate for gold is tried in the fire in order for gold to become pure we need to put it through fire so that all the things that we don't want in the gold are burnt away the sand the iron whatever foreign material is in that gold we want gone it says and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So the furnace of adversity is the tribulations and trials that we go through so that we can become better people, so that we can become what the Most High Yahweh wants us to be, so that we can become that gold in Second Ezra 8 and 1. 
So I'm ending with this scripture and this is 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and I'm looking for verse 12. So now Paul is saying, for we dare not make ourselves of the number. Don't even try to include yourself in a number and say, you know what, I'm going to make it. You don't know if you are going to endure until the end. There is no one saved, always saved situation here. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. So don't compare yourself to somebody that say, you know what, I'm going to make it. It says, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. You are not wise if your measuring stick is just yourself. You know what? I've made it. I am holier than thou. I'm okay. Nobody can ever tell me anything. I'm there. So I'm going to read this one more time and then I'm going to close off. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Let us not be like those individuals that not, that's not wise. Let's ask the Most High to give us wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Right. So thank you again for listening. Please make sure to share, to like, to, to subscribe. Don't forget to like because the more you like, the more other people will see. Don't forget when you share, subscribe and ask those individuals to subscribe. We need to get this word out. So again, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.